Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 56 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam. Today we're going to focus on the topic of quadratic graphs. So we're going to look at how to draw quadratic graphs and how to answer some questions involving quadratic graphs. So in this video I'm going to go through those. I'm also going to get you to do some questions yourself or perhaps with quadratic graphs I'm going to get you to think about doing some questions yourself. And then I'll talk about where the practice questions are in the description below because they'll be quite useful for this topic. But in today's video we're going to look at quadratic graphs, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at quadratic graphs. So let's start off by looking at drawing quadratic graphs. So here we've got the graph y equals x squared plus x. So we're going to plot and draw this quadratic. So we've got x and y in our xy table. And we've got our x coordinates. Let's find our y coordinates. So to find the y coordinates, we're going to square the x coordinate and then plus the x coordinate again. So here if we had 3, we're going to be doing 3 squared plus 3 because it's x squared plus x. So we we're going to do 3 squared plus 3. So 3 squared is equal to 9 plus 3 is equal to 12. So that would be 12. Okay, at this point, whenever x is equal to 2, so we're going to do 2 squared plus 2. So 2 squared plus 2. And 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. So that would be 6. Okay, whenever x is equal to 1, we're going to do 1 squared plus 1. So that's 1 squared plus 1. 1 squared is equal to 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So that's equal to 2. Okay, now 0, so we're going to do 0 squared plus 0, so 0 squared plus 0 is equal to 0 squared is 0, plus 0 is 0, so 0. Okay, next, negative 1. Now you've got to be careful with these ones, the negative 1, so we're going to do negative 1 squared, and then we're going to add negative 1. So negative 1 squared, remember that's a negative times a negative because we're multiplying it by itself, so we've got negative 1 multiplied by negative 1, and negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 1 times a negative 1 is 1, so this is equal to 1, so I'm just going to write that down, 1 plus, and then we're going to be adding negative 1. Now when we add a negative number, rather than going up, it goes down, so if we're adding negative 1, we're at 1, we're going to go down 1, so that's equal to 0. So so negative 1 squared plus negative 1 is equal to 0. So that's equal to 0. Okay, next, negative 2. So we're now going to do negative 2 squared plus negative 2. So let's work out what that is. So negative 2 squared, that's negative 2 times negative 2. And negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 2 squared is 4. And then we're going to add negative 2. So instead of going up 2, we're going to go down 2. So we're at 4, we're going to go down 2, that's equal to 2. Now you may actually notice there's a bit of a pattern there. 0, 0, 2, 2, 6, and then this one will be 6. This one was 12, so the one before that would be 12, and so on. So there's a bit of a pattern there. That's not always the case whenever you're getting your points for your quadratic graphs. And you'll see some of those later. But actually, sometimes it does happen. And actually just reassures you you've got it right. So let's plot these points. So 3, 12. So 3 across 12 up would be there. 2, 6. That's 2 across 6 up, which would be there. 1, 2, which would be 1 across 2 up, which would be there. 0, 0, the origin, which is there. Negative 1, 0, which is there. And then negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2 would be here. Okay, so we've plotted our points. Now let's draw our curve. So our curve would look something like this. And that's it. So we've just done a nice curve through those points. And if you've done yours on paper, yours probably looks a bit better than this one. Uh, but this is the best I could do. Uh, so this is my parabola. Now in terms of the shapes of the graphs, if you've got an x squared, so a positive x squared, you'd have a u-shaped parabola like so. If it's a minus x squared, it'd actually be an n-shaped parabola. So whenever you've got x squared, it's a u-shaped parabola. When it's a minus x squared, it's an n-shaped parabola like so. And it's called a parabola. That's the name of that quadratic graph. That it's called a parabola. That's u-shape or n-shape. Okay. So that we've drawn the graph of y equals x squared plus x. Now let's have a look at another one. Okay, so we've drawn one quadratic. Let's have a look at another one. So this time we're going to draw the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 3. And we've got an xy table, so let's find our coordinates. So whenever x is equal to 3, we'd have 3 squared, subtract 3, subtract 3. So we'd have 3 squared, subtract 3, subtract 3. Just substitute in x equals 3. So 3 squared is 9. Take away 3 is 6. Take away another 3 would be 3. So whenever x equals 3, y is equal to 3. Okay, whenever x is equal to 2, so we're going to substitute 2 in here, so we're going to get 2 squared, subtract 2, subtract 3. So 2 squared, subtract 2, subtract 3. So 2 squared is 4. Take away 2 is equal to 2. Take away 3 is equal to negative 1, so it's negative 1. Okay, now 1, we're going to substitute in x equals 1 here, so we're going to have 1 squared, subtract 1, subtract 3. So 1 squared is 1, subtract 1 is 0, subtract 3 is negative 3, so it's negative 3. Okay, now 0, so we're going to do 0 squared, subtract 0, subtract 3, so 0 squared, subtract 0, subtract 3. 0 squared is 0, take away 0 is 0, take away 3 is negative 3, so it's negative 3. Okay, now x equals negative 1, so we'll have negative 1 squared, subtract negative 1, subtract 3. So you need to be quite careful whenever the x value is negative. So negative 1 squared, well negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 
Then we're going to subtract negative 1. So you're subtracting a negative, so you're going to go back up. So it's going to be adding 1 and then subtract 3. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Take away 3 is equal to negative 1. And as you see here, there's a bit of a pattern where we've got negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. So I'm assuming this one's going to be 3. And 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. Take away 3 is equal to 3. So we've got the y is equal to 3, and that's what we wanted. We wanted it to be 3. So let's plot our points now. So we've got 3, 3. So 3 across 3 up. We've got 2, negative 1. So 2, negative 1 would be there. We've got 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3 would be there. We've got 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3 would be there. Negative 1, negative 1 would be there. And negative 2, 3 would be here. So we've got our points of our parabola, that U shape. Now we'll do a nice curve through them. And I just want to point out that whenever you get to this point here, don't go straight across the bottom. You're going to go down a little bit further and up again. And then you'll then draw that side there. So that is our parabola, that's our U-shaped parabola. And again, it's not necessarily the best one because I'm doing another computer, but that's the best I could do, that's a U-shaped parabola. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, now this is the one's for you to try. Can you please complete this XY table for Y equals X squared plus two X subtract three? So pause the video now and work out these points. Okay, so it's saying that to find the Y value, you're gonna square the X value, you're going to then add double the x value and then take away 3. Or you're going to square the x value, add 2 times the x value and then take away 3. So we've got our points. And what's great is, as you can see, then that would be negative 3. The next one will be 0. The next one will be 5, 12, and so on. And let's plot our points. 3, 12. So that's 3, 12. So that's going to be there. 2, 5. So 2, 5 is going to be in here, there, in the middle. 1, 0 is going to be there. 0, negative 3 would be there. 1, negative 4 would be there and 2, negative 3 would be there. So we've plotted our points, now let's draw our parabola, so it would be like something like this. And that's it. So that's our graph of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, and if we went a bit further, it would come back up again. Okay, so there's another part to this question, and let's write down the coordinates of the turning point. So sometimes you might be asked to write down the coordinates of the turning point, or the minimum point, or the maximum point. Now this graph has a minimum point, it's the lowest point here, and as you can see it's this point here, this is the minimum point. And the coordinates of this minimum point or turning point would be negative 1, negative 4. So negative 1, negative 4. So when you've got an x squared quadratic, that U-shaped parabola, if you're asked for the coordinates of the turning point or the minimum point, you write down the coordinates of that lowest point of the graph. So here'd be negative 1, negative 4. If it was a minus x squared quadratic, so if it was an n-shaped parabola, you might be asked for the coordinates of the turning point or the maximum point, and so you'd write down the coordinates of that maximum point. And that's it. So the coordinates of the turning point would be negative 1, negative 4. And that's it. Okay, so so far we've looked at those U-shaped parabolas whenever we've got x squared. Now I just want to show you that if you had something, for instance, y equals minus x squared, where you've got a minus sign in front of the x squared, instead of it being a U-shaped parabola, a U-shaped graph, it'll be an N-shaped graph like so. And the reason is because here we've got minus x squared. Now remember in algebra if we had minus x, that's the same as minus 1x, so we're multiplying it by negative 1. So if you've got minus x squared, what you're doing is you're getting your x squared, so 3 squared is 9, but then you're changing the sign or you're multiplying it by negative 1, so it'd be then be negative 9. You would do 2 squared is equal to 4, but then you would change the sign to be negative 4. You do 1 squared, which is 1, and then you're going to times it by negative 1 or change the sign, which would be negative 1. 0 squared is 0, and then times it by negative 1 is still 0. Negative 1 squared, well, negative times negative is a positive 1, and then you're going to change the sign, multiply by negative 1, so it'll be negative 1. And negative 2 squared, that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4, but then you're going to times it by negative 1 or change the sign to be negative 4, and it would look something like this. So if you've got a quadratic that's minus x squared instead of x squared, it'd be an n shape rather than a u shape. Okay, let's draw one last quadratic. So this time we're going to draw y equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. So this time we've got an xy table, and what we're going to do is we're going to square the x values, we're then going to double that answer, and then we're going to take away 3 times the x value and take away 2. So if x is equal to 3, so let's see what we get. 3 squared is equal to 9, and then double it would be 18. We're going to subtract 3 times 3, so we're going to take away 9, and then we're going to take away 2. So that would be equal to 7, because 18 take away 9 is 9, take away 2 is 7. So that would be 3, 7, so 3 across 7 up, that will be that point there. Okay, next, whenever x is equal to 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, so we've got 8, subtract, 6, subtract 2. And 8, subtract 6, subtract 2 would be equal to 0, so it's going to be 2, 0, so 2 across 0, so it would be there. Okay, next, whenever x is equal to 1, so 1 squared is equal to 1, times 2 is equal to 2, we're going to take away 3, and then we're going to take away 2. So 2 take away 3 is equal to negative 1, take away 2 is negative 3, so that'll be 1, negative 3, so, so 1 across, 3 down, so that'll be there. Okay, next, 0, so that's 1's quite nice, 0 squared is 0, times by 2 is 0, take away 3 times 0 is 0, take away 2 is negative 2, so whenever x is equal to 0, we'd get that that's equal to, y is equal to negative 2, so it's going to be there. Okay, next, whenever x is equal to negative 1, negative 1 squared is equal to 1, times 2 is 2, 
Then we're going to take away 3 times negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, so take away negative 3, subtract 2. And then 2 subtract negative 3, well that's going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5. Take away 2 is equal to 3. So it's equal to 3, so let's plot that point. Negative 1, 3, so it'll be there. Okay, then finally, whenever x is equal to negative 2, well negative 2 squared, that's going to be 4, times 2 is 8. We're going to subtract 3 times negative 2, that's going to be negative 6, and then take away 2. 8 take away negative 6, that's going to be 8 plus 6, which is 14. Take away 2 is equal to 12. So whenever x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 12. So it'll be negative 2, 12. So there's our points, and let's just draw a parabola, so it looks something like this. And that's it, we've drawn our graph. Okay, okay. so we've had a look at how to draw quadratic graphs. Now another thing you could be asked to do with quadratic graphs is, it's actually used the quadratic graphs to find roots or estimate roots. So here we've got y equals x squared minus x minus 2. And we've been asked to use the graph to find the roots of x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. So as you notice here, the y has changed to 0. So in other words, the height is 0. So we want to find where this graph, this quadratic, crosses the x-axis because of the x-axis, all the heights are 0. So if we find where the graph crosses the x-axis, we can find the root which are the answers of the solution to this quadratic. Now remember with quadratics you can factorize and solve them, so you could factorize this and solve it, uh, but here we can use a graph as well, because if we have a look here at this x-axis where the heights are equal to zero, you can see it crosses here whenever x is equal to negative one, and whenever x is equal to two. So this quadratic would have two solutions, x is equal to negative one, or and x is equal to two, so x is equal to two, so there are two solutions. And if you factorize this and solve it, you would get two answers, that x is equal to negative one, and x is equal to 2, and there'll be your two solutions, or our two roots. So if you want to use a quadratic to solve something like this, where the y is changed to 0, you just find where the graph crosses the x-axis, because the height there is 0, so you just find where it crosses the x-axis. Sometimes the question might say estimate, and that would be wherever, for instance, this quadratic graph doesn't go through nice coordinates, like negative 1 and 2, and it might be, for instance, maybe negative 1.2 and so on. So it's an estimate rather than a, you know exact answers. In this case, we've been able to read off the exact answers. And that's it. This time we've been asked to use the graph to estimate the values for x whenever y is equal to 3. In other words, estimate the values of x whenever y, the height, is equal to 3. So if we go back to our graph, we want to estimate the values of x whenever the height of the graph is equal to 3. So we're going to go across to where the height's equal to 3. That's the graph y equals 3. Remember how to draw that straight line graph, y equals 3. So we've got here the y is equal to 3, so we draw the graph y equals 3. And we just read off where the graph, the quadratic, crosses that line. So as you can see, that would be y one of them there, and this would be another point here. And those points would be here. So we've got negative 1 and negative 2, so it's negative 1.2, negative 1.4, negative 1.6, and negative 1.8. So it would be x equals negative 1.8, that's one estimate. And the other one here would be x is equal to 2.8, because 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8. So that's our estimates for the value of x whenever y is equal to 3. So what we done was we just consider when the height of the graph is equal to 3, and we just drew that line, y equals 3, and we just went down to find what the values for x would be. And we found that they would be x is equal to minus 1.8, or and, or x is equal to 2.8. And just to show you that question could be asked in a slightly different way, rather than saying estimate the values for x whenever y is equal to 3, like in the question before, whenever we had the graph y equals x squared minus x minus 2, and they've just changed the y to 0, so finding where the heights are equal to 0, you could write it this way, where you've got the x squared minus x minus 2 equals 3, and it's just saying, when does the quadratic graph have a height of 3? And then that's what you do, you just go across at 3, and just read off those values, and that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to draw those quadratic graphs, those U-shaped parabolas or perhaps N-shaped parabolas. We've looked at how to draw them. We've looked at some questions involved in them. And hopefully, I mean that you're much more confident with your quadratic graphs whenever it comes to answering questions based on them. So I really hope you found this video useful. Remember, there's 56 days to go into your GCC maths exam. So keep up the hard work. Be doing your five a days. So your numeracy, foundation, and foundation plus five a days. And also just keep up your hard work and lessons and with your revision at home and so on. So keep up the hard work. And tomorrow, there'll be 55 days. Remember, YouTube, 3 o'clock will be in the next video. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.